From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. Okay, I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you. I'm going to preach to you this morning from the book of Leviticus. That's the second book in the Bible. Leviticus chapter number 10. Third book in the Bible. I knew that. I was just checking to see if you guys were listening. The third, be quiet, Mike. The third book in the Bible is Leviticus. The fourth book is Numbers. Okay. (laughs) Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay, I got you now. It's the, which one is? Third book. Okay, right. The book of Leviticus is mostly a book about uh, uh, describing how to worship. Uh, The Old Testament folks, uh, they had a certain, certain, uh, a way that God wanted it done. Right. Did you ever work for somebody that wanted it done their way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have never saw anybody that's hard to get along with as God. He's got a way of doing it, yeah. Yeah. and he don't want your way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Now this 10th chapter is an illustration about some folks who wanted to worship any old way they wanted to. Yeah. Let's look what happens. Leviticus chapter number 10. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, (coughs) took either of them his censer, put fire therein and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and Elisaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried their them in their coats out of the camp. That's what happens when we try to be like Dave Thomas and have it our way. There's a lot of folks that uh, want to have it their way. And I want to preach. on. I just want to give you this morning. I'm not here to try to make you mad at me. I just want to give you this morning. God's got one way of doing things. There's not a thousand ways that leads to heaven. There's only one way that goes to heaven. God's prescribed way is through the cross, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father, thank you this morning for the privilege to pray. Lord, for opportunity to preach for you. God, help me to preach for you and not for my own benefit or my own glory. But help me, Lord, to preach for you that God people may be instructed in the ways of the Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Nadab and Abihu, the first thing I notice about them is their privilege. They were the sons of the very high priest of Israel. Their father held the highest religious office in the nation. He was the high priest and he was a for all practical aspects, a a godly man himself, a father that taught them right. I I don't believe they went in here in ignorance. I believe that they were taught right. I believe the Bible was read to them. And I believe that they heard the instruction and learned what to do and chose to do it a different way than what God designed. I believe they can't blame their daddy. I believe he teached them and they had the privilege of knowing how it should be done. Yep. The Bible said over in the book of James, Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Yep. So if you know how God wants it done and you do not do what God wants you to do, then mark it down, you've sinned against the commandments of God. 
the parable of the talents there in Matthew chapter 5. Is that, is that talents or uh, I think it is. The parable there, it, it says that uh, there was one fellow that he knew what to do with the talent that he had, but he hid it and didn't use it. You remember there were five fellows that come in there, and, or five, uh, one guy had five talents come in there, and because he had used them, God had added to them. Amen. Yes, right. If you will use what you got, God will give you more. Amen. Amen. The other fellow didn't get quite as many, but he got more than he had. And then we come to this one fellow that knew what to do, and he knew that he called him an asture man. He said, hey, you're rough, and I knew you was rough, and I wanted to make sure I didn't lose nothing, so I hid it. I didn't do nothing with it. Well, the Lord wasn't very pleased with such a fella. He took what he had away from him. There's a preacher that I know that said I took his talent. He quit about the time I started 40 years ago. I hadn't preached since. And every time he sees me, he says, I took his I didn't take his talent. I mean, God called me to preach. Yeah. I mean, because he wouldn't preach didn't mean that God can't have somebody else to do it. Amen. If I quit now, if I throw my Bible down now, God's not in no bind. Amen. It's our privilege to do it God's Amen. way. Amen. They knew what to do, and yet they, in presumption, they done it the wrong way. And what happened, the Bible said, strange fire. Strange fire, fire that they made. It wasn't strange to them, it was strange to God. God didn't want foreign fire. He knows where the fire is. And He, he, wants, to, he wants us to come the proper way. We've got, we've got churches today that are built with strange fire. We've got every way but to preach and to build a church. We've got hot dog sales and pizza parlors and we've made the house of God just a den of merchandise. God's got one way of, of saving people and it says in the book, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. If preaching won't do it, you better not do it. You better not add your fire to what God has done. Cain was guilty of bringing his own fire, if you will. He was guilty. The Bible said in the process of time, both of the boys brought their offering before the Lord. Proverbs 13, 15 says, The way of a transgressor is hard. Cain's about to find that out. There was a man several years ago put out a song, Me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. You don't know how many times people have told me I'm a Christian in my own way. I don't go to church, but I'm a Christian in my own way. Me and Jesus, you and Jesus ain't got nothing going, brother. Unless, unless you come God's way, uh, it's not windy. You're not going to have it your way. You're going to have to bow beneath the cross of Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I should go to hell, but thank you for the blood that made it possible I could go to heaven. People in as high office as the President of the United States don't have a clue. I mean, he's just as unqualified to speak on spiritual things as the Pope. He don't have any idea what's going on. Neither one of them are qualified to speak on spiritual things because they're completely discombobulated. They don't know one end of the Bible from the other. If you'd ask them what book the book of Leviticus way, they'd tell you the second book. They don't know nothing about the things of God. Rude, empty, half-learned ignoramuses that wants to tell us how we should do religious. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It would be funny if it wasn't so tragic. Now, I personally believe it's an exception to the rule for God's people to have to go through trial. I do. I believe God's, God's main nature is to be good to you and give you a good life because it's a, God is a good God. But I also believe that if He calls on you to go through trial, He's got a grace that's sufficient to take Amen. you through. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But all of our, all of our nation's leaders there, I, I say Luke chapter 6 and verse 39, when the question was asked, can the blind lead the blind? Amen. That's what you got in Washington, D.C. That's what you got down in the State House of uh, Charleston, West Virginia. You got a bunch of blind people trying to tell other blind people how to go, and all those blind people are going in the ditch. 
Jesus said this. I didn't say this. Jesus said this. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He didn't say I am a way. He didn't say I am one of many ways. He said I am the way. Now I'm not an English student, but that delivers it to this fact that He is the only way there is. I am the way. But just like Cain hated Abel, people hates me. The, the politicians of our day hates Christian preachers. We stand in their way of their one world government that they're trying to set up. They got to get rid of us before they can ever set it up. Uh, uh, they'll hate me uh, uh, and they'll say, well, our religion's good as your, your religion go take you to hell, brother, just as fast as the unlocked wheels of time can go unless your religion believes in Jesus Christ. Amen. Presumed. He re they rejected the instruction. That same book of Leviticus says God told them where to get to fire from. He said, you get your fire off the altar. Yeah. Boy, Amen. wouldn't that be a blessing? Yeah. Some people talking about the church being cold and dried up and been 15 years since you've been to the altar. Yeah. You want to get some fire, you need to get out of that seat and get up here on this altar and say, God in heaven, I need the fire of God in my life. Amen. The incense altar was a type of prayer. Whenever that incense would go up, it, it was just a, an illustration of what prayer would do. If you want real fire, then you need to get to the altar of prayer. Amen. If you follow, follow fire through the Bible, you'll find that fire represents the righteousness of God in Deuteronomy 32. Fire represents the Word of God in Jeremiah 20. Fire represents the favor of God in 2 Chronicles 7. But mostly I see fire represents Hebrews 12, 29, that God is a consuming fire to those that don't come His way. Fear not Him that hath destroyed the body and hath no more that He can do, but fear Him that can destroy both body and soul in hell. People believe everybody goes to heaven. They don't go to heaven. You don't go to heaven because you're a country music singer. You don't go to heaven because you're a Hollywood star. You don't go to heaven because you're a statesman or some kind of a big fancy politician. The only way you can go to heaven is, is God's way. Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. God will not share his glory with another. God will, when we get to heaven, there will be nobody bragging about what all they've done. Everybody there will be singing, worthy is the lamb that was slain, that redeemed us to God by his blood. Nadab and Abihu tried to force their way. Leviticus 16 and 2, God had told Moses, you can't come anytime you want to. That's right. you, you, that, you can't come at all times. You come, you come barging into the... Oh man, does that ever get good? When you come barging into the presence of God without a prescribed way, you'll die there. He told him that. But preacher, you told me I could come boldly. To the throne of grace. I did. There is a way that you can walk right in. Bless God, you can walk right in and sit right down and maybe take your shoes off wherever I let go. You can come into the presence of God one way. You can come boldly. But that way is a living way through the blood of Jesus Christ. Whenever you would approach the Savior, you would say, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's not something you tack on the end of your prayer. But that's how you have access to the throne of God. Presumption. Nadab and Abihu just came their way, brought strange fire. God had prescribed a way for them to come as He's prescribed us a way to come. We can come boldly, but they thought they could just come any way they wanted. If you could do it any way, then, then no way would be just good. The result, they perished. The same fire that they had rejected burned them up. It came right out of the place where they were supposed to get it. The same fire they rejected burned them up. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And a rejected Savior becomes a judge. Amen. The rejected Savior becomes, becomes the, the judge of all the earth. Light rejected becomes darkness. 
And you know, you see people talking about this and, and they'll say, well, that's your interpretation. I don't have interpretations. Amen. You know, you can get a Baptist and a Methodist and a, a charismatic and a Presbyterian. You can get them together and give them all the same Bible and they will tell you, well, a, a Methodist will prove to you that he's right by this Bible. A, a Catholic will prove you he's right by this Bible. And what they do, watch this carefully, listen carefully what I'm getting ready to say. They can, they can make it mean anything they want, but they can't make it say anything they want. You remember the Bible lesson in Sunday school this morning? It, you might be a, 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 a post millennialist, and you might think that this time is the time that there's going to be peace in Jerusalem. But you can't make it say this is the time. What it says is peace in Jerusalem. That's what it says. You understand what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Tim was saying, well, you can take a document and put a bunch of lawyers in a room and lawyers can make it mean anything they want. And I'd say you can. You can make this Bible mean anything you want. But you cannot make it say anything you want it to say. If it says Jesus is the way, then you better believe you try some other way. You're going to get the strange fire that they got. You come some other way according to Jesus himself. John chapter 10, you're a thief and a robber. You've got to come the correct way. You have to come on the terms of the gospel. That's what I need to... The result was they perished. And because they perished, it tells us you can't come any old way.